Hi there and welcome again into my studio. This is my third time with Affinity Photo, but for those who don't know me, my name is Felix Hernandez. I'm a photographer, miniature and digital artist, and I create images for branded content and advertising campaigns. And I do this uh, kind of job by this kind of photography by building miniature scenes and models that then I photograph here in the studio and I take those photos into post-production to create my images and animation. So today I will be your host for this masterclass with Affinity Photo and I have divided this uh, masterclass in four brief lessons in which in each one I will guide you through my process of post-production of one of my projects. And while we are going to be focusing primarily in the digital process, I will also show you a sneak peek of what it went into the photo production for each one of the lessons. Uh, we are going to create four final images, one each in each lesson, using these little guys that I have here. Let me put them here, which are uh, robots that I have created for this master class as you saw in the intro video, and if you were wondering, the pre-production process for creating the robots took me about one month, and I used a 3D software, online software, to create the different parts of each one of the characters, and then I 3D print them. I have a resin printed, printer, sorry. And then it was just a matter of adding some small details, painting, and putting them all together. I designed the robots in a way that I could fit some uh, magnets so I could be, you know, they could be posable and uh, move and, and, you know, so maybe for making some small animations and or just pose them in front of the camera. And uh, I call these robots things just because I love to make uh, things. And, uh, of course, they have names, so let me present them. This uh, first one you have here, it's uh, called Trashy. The yellow one sitting down there, it's called Jimmy. Then we have uh, Potter. And uh, this one is Banksy, of course. It's a spray can. And this one doesn't have still a name but maybe you can help me with that. So anyway, before we go into Affinity Photo, I want to show you a brief video on how I did the setup for taking the photos that we are going to use for our first lesson. And uh, by the way, the photos I, I took are available to download so you can follow uh, along the four lessons and I'm pretty sure that below this video you have a link to Affinity's photo site so you can download. They are uh, raw files. Okay, so enough. Let's jump into the first uh, sneak peek uh, of what it went into creating uh, these images, these, these photos in the production. Here I'm just starting to set everything up. As you can see, I'm working just over a flat surface. In fact, it's a, there are two uh, working benches and just a door, and it's, it's completely a flat door. And I'm putting that leather just behind because I use it just to, it has two clamps, and I use it to hold some backgrounds. This is just uh, insulating material that I painted in, in black and it serves me as a backdrop, it's really lightweight. And now I'm putting the, the floor or the, the first plane in um, black cardboards. And I'm just making sure that nothing moves because sometimes I have to do multiple shots. So just clamping the boards to the table and making sure that it's uh, flat. And uh, now I normally have a space to one of the sides to put everything 
I'm going to use for taking the photos so I don't have to go around the studio and I like to put everything in, in order. As you can see, there we have our little guys. And now I'm just starting to place the different objects trying to make a composition that it's good uh, for the eye. It's just uh, cutting wood uh, for, you know, for food and a piece of wood with a lot of texture. Also like a kind of a tube made out of wood and a little like concrete wall that I made out of foam. So here is just like taking your time to pose the characters. I think that's really important. I mean, here I'm directing, not real people, <laughs> but uh, you know, these little characters. And uh, you have to take your time to, to, to pose them. And as you can see, as I told you, these are made with magnets. So I can hold them together like in different positions. And uh, if you are wondering, the, the rig, they, they cannot stand by their own because they weigh uh, too much for their legs are really, really thin. Something I'm working on, but the rig you saw there, it's a, it's a normal rig uh, that is commonly used in stop motion animation and also for product photography. It has like a different kind of attachments. Uh, so you can grab things and, and put them in place. And again, this is just now adding some small details, tires, some trash bags, some miniature spray cans. And, you know, trying to put these little guys together in a way that they feel right. Now I'm starting to putting the lights. So first I just uh, center in the composition of the image and then I, I start putting the lights. Here I'm putting the first light. This is just a uh, LED light, um, uh, tube light. And this one is going for the background. You can see here I'm turning off the video lights and turning on the light that it's uh, lighting the background. That helped us to separate the subjects from the background. And now here I'm adding a second light just over a C stand. This is a, a, also a LED light, really, really small. I wanted like harsh light. And this is just, let's say, a hard light that will highlight uh, some of the details and give uh, shape volume to the characters. You can see there what the two lights are doing at this point. So it's always good to add light by light, not to put them all together so you can see and understand what each of the lights are doing, whether you need more light or you know, less light or what kind of modifier. So this is the third light, let's call it the, the key light. It doesn't have so much personality as the others, but this is what is going to feel. Um, I call it key light, but in fact, is what it's doing is feeling the, the shadows. So uh, this uh, light coming from the top, it uh, has a soft box with a grid, so it uh, prevents that the light doesn't split to everywhere. And here you have like a zoom shot just to show you what of the lights are doing. The hair light, then the background light, then I'm turning on the main light coming from above with the soft box. And yep, that's it. And now we are seeing the gear I'm using. I'm using a full frame camera. I'm using a 100 millimeters macro lens and of course a tripod. But you can use any, you know, any camera works and almost every, any lens. I want compression, so that's why I'm using a 100 millimeter uh, lens. And uh, in fact, the macro capabilities of the lens, I'm not using it because I'm not getting uh, so close, but it's a lens that has a lot of uh, uh, sharpness, so I like to work with it. 
Okay, so now here are the settings. I'm working with 400 ISO uh, because I'm working with LED lights and because nothing is moving, I can work with lower shutter speeds. In this case, one tenth of a second and the uh, white balance is set to daylight. I mean, there are raw photos, but anyway. And I'm also giving a self timer of two seconds just to prevent moving the camera when pushing the shutter. And you can see the distance between me and the subjects. I'm not so close. And that's it. That's what came out from the camera and what we are going to work with. It's uh, really simple. For this first lesson in Affinity Photo, we are going to work just with one image. And I will tell you, uh, going into Affinity Photo, what we are going to do with this. So there you have it, hope you have enjoyed that. And now we are going to take this uh, final photo into Affinity and start playing with it to create uh, some fun stuff. So let's go and jump right into Affinity Photo. We are now in my computer and uh, here we have uh, our file. It's the same file you have uh, downloaded if you have do so. And by the way, you can use this file for practicing, following along this lesson. You can even post uh, uh, your final arts in, in, in your social media. The only thing you cannot do is to use it for commercial purposes. Okay, so that's it. We are going just to grab our file into Affinity Photo 2. I have the latest version. It's Affinity Photo 2, I think it's 2.1, something like that. Okay, so now let me just close these tabs so we can start uh, more organized. And well, here you have the metadata. You can see that I took this uh, photo with the Canon 5D Mark IV. I also have the, mano, the Canon R5C, but I took this once with the Mark IV. Okay, and I shot it at ISO 400, one tenth of a second. Uh, here the aperture is uh, unknown, it's in zero because I was using a manual lens, uh, but I was shooting around f18 because I wanted a great depth of field, meaning that I want most of the image in focus, okay? So that's it. What we are going to do is uh, to create a black and white image with an accent of color that is going to be a light coming out from this uh, yellow robot, his Jimmy. And we are working with a raw file. So for default, it will open us the raw files in the develop persona, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, well, just a quick tour. We are like uh, seeing the image in the whole screen, but here we can divide the image to see what we are doing, or we can divide it this way, the before and after. And here we can zoom in or zoom out and move around our image, okay? Let's leave it this way. And what else? Okay, so let's start with the uh, fun part. Here I'm going to the basic ad adjustments. Exposure, if you did write the, the things in the studio, take the photos, you, you would not have to move a lot here. But I mean, I'm going to lighten up a little bit the image. Now, I'm going to take away a little bit of contrast. It's the other way, around there. Clarity, I'm going to zoom a little bit more so you can see what it's doing. You can see before and after. So yes, maybe just a little bit of clarity around there. I will leave saturation and vibrance because uh, we are going to convert this image in black and white. So you will see just in a sec. Okay, the white balance. 
this is going to be like a moody night image so I'm going to take the white balance a little bit to the colder side and adding also a shift more to the greens not to the magentas maybe right there shadows and highlights you can see here this this highlight in the yellow robot so I'm going to just push the highlight a little bit down around there and take away some of the shadows it's something like that okay again you can see the before and after this is the after and this is the before I mean right now the before looks uh, much better but again I'm thinking in the next steps what I'm going to do so and this is just a matter of taste of course you can go in any direction you want so other important thing here we are in basic, basics it's the profiles so let me show you right now we are working in sRGB which is great for digital devices sharing in uh, internet social media this is a shorter color space but the standard we are going to maybe do some prints it's uh, working in Adobe RGB so I will leave it there okay now next to basics we have the lens information again you here have a lot of the lenses most common use different brands uh, if you have the latest version of Affinity Photo it has more lenses of course it's, it gets updated uh, but I'm going to leave it just this way here you can correct the chromatic aberration distortion vignette of the lens depending on what lens you are using uh, maybe we are going to play around a little bit with the with the vignette uh, but first we are going to details so I don't want noise, noise reduction I want to add a little bit more of details let me zoom in just about there looks sharper we can add noise I don't want to add noise but sometimes it's handy now we are going to the tones and here first we are going to convert our image in black and white it's not just a matter of clicking one button you can see that we have different colors for example here uh, Banksy is red and if we go to black and white and we move the reds we can make Banksy darker or lighter all the reds of course so I think I'm going to fast forward the video because it's just uh, I'm just going to be moving the sliders to a point that I like it uh, but before just also to show you that in the original image our background is blue and uh, I want this background a little bit darker so in our black and white conversions I will just take my blues and make them darker okay I think that we are in a point that I like it for the next steps and okay so I'm going to add a little bit of or maybe a lot of vignette so I'm here again in the lenses I'm going to cr post crop vignette and I'm going to make uh, you can make it harder or softer we are not seeing anything because right now we have the intensity in zero but here you can see as well the scale of the vignette harsher softer I think this is a good starting point perfect so I think we are ready to go to the photo persona remember we are in developing persona because we are working with a raw file and uh, before 
uh, we go into the photo persona. You just have to click here, develop. Uh, but you have some output options, okay? So uh, normally it's in pixel. This means it's going to open the image, but if you want to change anything uh, of what we have done at this point, you will not be able. So if you uh, select raw and we go to the photo persona, at any point, if we want to go back and maybe change uh, uh, the black and white conversion, we can do so. So I'm gonna leave it in raw and I'm going to push develop to go to photo persona. So now we are in the photo persona. Remember we were in the develop persona. Now we are in the photo persona and we are going to start cleaning our image. The first thing I see, control or command R, it's the, the rulers, there we have them, uh, is that our image is not straight, right? So I'm going to grab the crop tool and here we have an option, straighten, I'm going to select it and I'm just going to draw a line through the horizontal line of my image about there, yeah about there and it already has straightened our image of course it crops a little bit but I think I'm going to even crop uh, a little bit more the image here you have different options I want to crop freely so unconstrain it And I think about there. If you are okay with that, you have to go to and apply. The good thing is that you never lose the information. So again, maybe if I want to recover a little bit more of the top, you can do so. Maybe the bottom, maybe around here and apply. Oh, I think I went too far. There. Apply. Well, now I see that we have some spots. This is because the sensor of my camera is not clean. I think so, like this one. And uh, here we have another one, this one. So I'm going to use the patch tool, this one that I have here, to get rid of those, those nasty spots. But I'm not going to do it in the, in, over the image. I want to have control, so I'm going to create a new layer and I'm work, going to work in that layer. But for that, when you choose the tool, you have some options here. And uh, right now, it will only work in the layer I'm selecting. And this is, of course, a blank layer. It's a new layer, okay? So I want to work in that layer, but with the information of the layer below. So I will select current and below. And now, let me zoom in. I can just select this area and bring it to an area that it's clean. That easy. Same for this one to this area, to this one, and to this area, and this one, and to this area. So you, you get the idea. I'm not going to make it perfect because, you know, we have the, the time. We don't want to spend a lot of time, but you get the idea. So now you can see that we have all those changes. You see the before and after. We have them in an independent layer. So we have more control. So the other thing I want to do is uh, I have these lines where the two cardboards met. And uh, 
think they are a little bit distracting. So I'm just going to, I think again with the patch tool, I'm just going to select again in the blank layer. I'm just going to select this area. Uh, I think I have to select a wider area. Maybe here, think about there. The other side, let me see again, and uh, here, okay. And if I want to refine that, maybe I'm going to grab the clone stamp tool. Okay, I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and softer. You can manage here the flow, the intensity. Okay, maybe around 20%. And you can also make, make it harder or softer. See, here is hard and here is soft. But you can also do this from your keyboard by selecting the Control and Option K and just sliding your mouse to the right or to the left, up or down. So up or down will be softer or harder brush and the size of the brush is if, if, if you move your mouse to the right or to the left. I'm holding the two keys, okay, control and option, and just moving the mouse. And I'm going to select maybe this area, the source, and just paint here, just a little bit. I'm going to the other side, selecting this area, and just painting there. We want smooth transitions, something like that. And something like that. You get the idea. And as well, this is set to current and below. And again, we are working in the blank, in the blank layer. So now, the next thing is we want to take out the rig of this uh, robot. This one is tricky, so I think we are going to make it in a new blank layer, but before we have to make a selection. I'm just going to grab my pen tool here. Zoom a little bit. It's not going to be perfect, but maybe around here, here. I just want to have enough space to... for this uh, selection, something like that. No, that's too much. That's too much. Maybe around there and around there. So now we have made our first selection. And we want to make this uh, path, this line, we want to select it, right? So let's go here and make a selection. And I'm, I want to work in a cleaner layer, a new one. And I think for this one, I'm going to grab again the clone tool, the clone stamp tool. Just make sure you are working in current and below. And I want to select this area and put it here. Something like that. Just a smooth transition. Control or Command D to deselect. Uh, oh, this was part of the, of the rig and I didn't select it. So let me go back. And I'm going to make a new selection to be about here, 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 here. Okay, something like that. And again, selection, working the new layer, the clone stop. And let me see. 
Yes. Now we go. Okay, I have set the flow to five just to go smooth. It's looking great. Now we have this area, so I'm going to do the same thing. You can go and fast forward if you like. Something like this. Again, it's not perfect, but you can take your time. Here, here, uh, this comes maybe around here. No, something like that. Okay, so again, we have here our draw lines. We're going to make it a selection. And with the clone stamp, current and below. I'm going to grab information from maybe from here and put it here. Okay. more something like that control D to deselect mm, I think I have to grab a little bit more information of here yeah to make smoother transition Okay, deselect. And there you have it, the before and after. So if we take out, hide the original image, you can see what we have been doing, all the arrangements, right? So this is a good place to start doing other stuff. Well, before we go further, I'm going to place everything in a folder. Okay, just select the three layers and a new folder or group. Inside the folder, you can see all of our individual layers. This is just to clean up a little bit uh, here and work in order. And as well, before going further, I'm going to go to File and save us our file. I will call them robots1. Well, now we're going to add some light to the scene. And the light is going to be coming out from the eyes of the, uh, the eyes of this robot, of Jimmy. So I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to grab my pen tool and make here a cure or a selection. Maybe I'm going to swing a little bit more. Maybe around here. And you can see here we have our first uh, cure. I'm going to do one more here with this eye. And there we have our second. Um, I'm going to make a fourth one here. Because I'm not going to use just one color for the eye. Uh, let me zoom in. Yes, about there. Okay, perfect. And one more for this side. Perfect. So we have four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So I'm going to make selection for the first one and I'm going to fill it with a yellow, yellow color. So we can go up here 
to edit and fill. You can see that it's a shift F5 in my keyboard, if you want the shortcut. And I think I want another yellow, more saturated, maybe around here, between yellow and orange. And here we can make it lighter or darker, okay? I think I want this like full saturation. So if I'm okay, I'm going to apply. And now for the second one, I'm also going to make the selection. In the same layer, I'm going to fill it in the same layer. So again, edit, fill. It's already selected the, the color, apply. So in this layer, we have fill with that yellow. Now I'm going to choose like a lighter yellow for this section. So I'm going to select the curve, selection. Now you know the shortcut, five. And I'm going to select a lighter tone, maybe something like that, and apply. Ah, but I did it in the same, in the same layer. I want it apart just to have control, so I'm going to make a new layer. And now again, fill, apply, and now the last one. So again, selection is going to be in the same layer, and apply. Um, I think I'm going to create a new one. Again, with the pen tool, my pen tool is here, make a selection here. This is going to be the brightest part of the eyes. Let me select this. Something like that. So let me go to this one, selection. But now I'm going to uh, fill with white. Almost white, something like that. Apply. And same one for this eye. Apply. Control D to deselect, and there we go. So we have one, two, and three. This is handy maybe if you are doing an animation or you just want to have control over the over the light. So the first one I'm going to blur, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, this one. You can see here the effect, so maybe about there, apply. And for the second one, I'm again going to blur, filter, Gaussian blur but this is going to be a little bit less. Maybe there. Why? And for the third one, same thing, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And for this one, I'm going to go a little bit harder. There we go. Something like that. So we can take these three layers okay, and put them in a folder, or you can, in your keyboard, go with Command or Control G, and there you go, you have them in a folder. You can name the folder, so this is going to be Lights, Eyes, and this is going to be uh, our base. Okay, now we're going to still be adding more lights. I'm going to make a new layer on top. And I'm going to grab again my pen tool. And I'm going to select part of the face. Here you have to just see li how light works. Where will it uh, normally hit 
or reflect to be something around here. Okay. And again, I'm going to do that as a selection and I'm going to fill it. with yellow, a little bit more saturated, something like that. Uh, no. I think around there. And we can also play with the blending mode. So right now, this is in a normal blending mode, but we can go maybe to overlay or to soft light. I think I like soft light. And of course, this is too harsh. We need a transition, right? So we are going to make again a mask. We are going to grab our uh, gradient tool and we are going to make a gradient. Maybe it's thinking because I'm recording. Uh, no, maybe around around there. I think I went too far. Maybe from here to here. Now we're going to make something similar for this boot that is going to be reflecting some of these lights. So I'm going to grab a new layer, pen tool, And I'm going to make different selections. Maybe this will be one. Maybe around here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to do another one from here to here. Something like that. Okay, another one here, and here, uh, maybe here as well. And another one from here to here. And the last one. Something like that. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. Uh, and I'm doing different selections because they, I mean, this, is, this has volume, different shapes, and the light will hit differently in each of the surface. So now that I have all my curves, I'm going to select each one and fill it with uh, jello in individual layers. So I'm going to grab first this one. I'm going to make a selection, uh, my selection tool. Okay. And there we go. Apply. Next one in a new layer. Okay. Let me first select it and in a new layer, fill, okay, the next one, selection, okay, but in a new layer, fill, and as well, the next one, selection, in a new layer, fill, and the last one, I'm going to make the selection in a new layer and fill. So it looks a little bit messy. And we can take all of them and apply a uh, soft light, just as in the face. And let me hide all of them and go in order. Let me see, maybe deselect. OK. 
Okay, so I'm going to start this one. I'm gonna make a mask and again gradient tool and I'm going from here to here. It's just a touch. The same for the next one. A mask. I'm going from here here. Let me go up. From here to here. You see that I didn't did the mask perfect. Doesn't matter. Just an exercise. So again, a mask. Let me show it. Gradient from here to uh, no, maybe this one from here to here, a little bit less. And the last one, a mask. And let's go maybe something like that. I'm going to apply to all of them a blur. This Gaussian blur. And the same blur. You can apply a different kind of blur or just repeat the one you, you did before. So I'm just going to repeat. I think for this one as well, you also have a shortcut, Control or Command F, and we are missing one, it's this one, Command F, okay, there we go. I think the same thing applies for the face. I think I went a little bit too far with the blur. Anyway, this is the face. So I'm going with filter, Gaussian blur, but not so much. Around there. Okay, okay. Now I'm going to take all these lights in the in the boot of the robot. I'm just going to place them in a folder. These are uh, lights in boot. Okay. I can throw this one. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to save. Now we are, we are going to add a little bit of highlight, so I'm going to a new layer. And now I'm going to draw with the brush. I'm just going to grab a normal brush, uh, but we want as well yellow. Let me select maybe... Mm, Oh yeah, around there. Something like that. And again, I'm going to make a layer mask. And now remember that everything that is in white in the layer mask is going to show the image attached to it. Everything that is in black is going to hide part of that, that image. So if I want to hide a little bit of this line that I did here, I just have to go and paint with black in the layer mask, okay? So something like that. 
just going to make it smoother and smaller. Something like that. And in the other side. Something like that. It's just a touch of light on there. And of course, you can go as well and maybe overlay, but for the image, not the layer mask. The image, overlay, I think overlay works better here. And of course, you can go and do that in different areas of the image. I'm just going to add maybe some little highlights. Uh, painting with yellow, with X in your keyboard. You can change your foreground color, or back, back color. Maybe just some highlights. Too big. Something like that. Something like that. I'm going to blur them. Gaussian blur. I didn't apply it, so you have to apply it. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Okay, apply. And I'm going to. Hmm. Maybe a soft light. I'm going to make as well a layer mask. Now painting with black to raise a little bit of those highlights. It's just a touch. And of course, you could go with a lighter color, maybe even white, to make even the highlights standing more. You get the idea. So I'm going to, as well, put these two highlights in a folder. And name it as Highlights. There we go. Save the image. And I'm going to add just a general light on top of everything. So I'm going to do a new layer. Again, I'm going to grab my brush with yellow. And I'm going to make a bigger brush and soft. I think that's too big. Something like that. Okay, and just a dot there. And I'm going to change it to, could be overlay, soft light. I think overlay looks better. Perfect. And the same thing. I'm going to, you can lower the opacity. You think it's too much. Maybe around there. And making a layer mask, I can take away a little bit of that color from painting with black, of course. From down here, here. And a little bit out of the head, something like that. I think I want to make a second one, but much lighter, but wider. Okay, so with yellow, the brush. Uh, that's too big. Maybe around there, a little bit bigger, yeah. Something like that. I'm going with a soft light and lowering the opacity, maybe just like that. So you see the advantage of making all these effects in different layers, all these lights in different layers, sorry. Because we can control the amount of light and if we are doing a later animation, that would look great. 
Well, now we are almost done. So before, let me just make a little bit more space here. No, 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 right there. Okay, I'm going to take my lights. Let's call them like general, general lights and put them in, in the folder. And uh, I mean, I'm liking the image, but I think that in order to the lights have more presence, I think I want to make darker my base. So on top of my base, I'm going to create some uh, layer adjustments, this symbol here. So maybe I'm going with, um, let me see, uh, some curves. Just want to make the image a little bit darker. The mid-tone, so maybe around here. Uh, yeah, maybe about there. I think it's too much. Okay, and as well, I think that the foreground is too distracting, so here I'm just going to add kind of a vignette, but easier. I'm just going to make a new layer. I'm going to fill it, okay, fill uh, with black. Let me make sure it's, yeah, it's totally black. Apply. I'm going to make a layer mask to that fill. And now again with the gradient tool. Hmm, I like that. Maybe around there. So this way our light has much, much presence. So let me just check. You can as well zoom here. there I like it okay just one more thing before we go um, I think I'm going to make a new layer and I told you that I call these little robots uh, things so I'm just want to put like I mean they have kind of spray cans so I'm just going to grab my brush smaller one Maybe something like that. And uh, I'm gonna paint, of course, behind the, let me see, behind the lights, below the lights, just after the base, okay? I'm going to select my color. I think I want to paint with white. This is a white, black and white image. And, let me see, see, it will be something like, it's just hand paint. Mm, I don't like this. Something like that. I mean, you can put more effort in this. Let me see. Maybe the overlay, soft light. I think overlay is working well. And I'm going to go to blur. Gaussian blur, just a little bit. To match with the depth of feel. Maybe around there, okay. And of course, I'm going to make a layer mask to remove what is on top of the robot. So again, with a brush, painting with black in the layer mask. OK, 
Okay. It's not going to be perfect. So we don't have want to be here all, all the day. So if you pass, so now you paint with black with white, it's just the reverse. Remember that we are hiding or revealing. With black we are hiding, hiding and revealing. Okay, maybe I'm going to lower the opacity about there. So yep, yeah, there we go. And let me show you what we could do. So there we have it. Here is just a really simple animation that you can do in any video editor. I, I didn't work with all the layers. I'm just, I, I just took the base layer and one of the two of the lighting effects. And it's just a matter of working with opacities in the video editor. You could add some noise, some sound effects, and there you have it. It's kind of a cinemagraph. It's a video made out of uh, two still images. Uh, you can export your files as PNGs, so the light effects have uh, uh, transparency, or you can export them as uh, any other format and playing with the blending modes as well in the uh, video editor. So anyway, thank you for watching this and see you in the next time. So great, we have created our first image. Uh, remember that this is the first of four uh, images we are going to create for this masterclass. And in the next lesson, we are going again uh, through a little bit of the photo production, and then we will jump again into Affinity Photo to create our second image and having more fun. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this and see you in the next lesson. Adiós.